a difficult thing to describe because it's not just doing what you want to do. That's not following your instinct. That's a very sort of impoverished idea of it. But really following your instinct in the sense that you keep yourself always open to possibilities. And when the possibilities come, you recognize them and you go with them. I just hope that uh, other possibilities will occur in my life. Well, you had once worked, didn't you, as a fairground barker? Uh, barker, yes. Well, it was, a, it was a sort of Saturday morning job I did while I was at school, much to the fury of my parents, for example. <laughs> well, what did, it, what did it require you to do? What did you have to do? Um, I had to, I stand, I, I stood at a, a dart stall and I called out to the people who were walking by to try and attract them to my stall as opposed to anyone else's. I've always been very attracted by fairground circus life, you know, a, a transient life like why? that. I don't know, I can't say why. You know, it's like that song uh, by, who is it by? Shirley Bassey, is it? I wanted to join the circus. No, uh, um... Go on, you tell me what's Eartha the name. Eartha Kitt, exactly. Um, I mean, I, that's my, sort of one of my theme songs, absolutely. You were also, you were quoted re recently saying that you like sort of fairground men, men with greasy hair and leather jackets, you said. <laughs> Would that be another reason, perhaps, why you enjoyed being in a fairground? <laughs> possibly, or possibly I got the idea while I was there. It's not so much that I like men who look like that, but... Uh, Yes, I suppose I do, but I mean, I strongly dislike men who look in another way. Like men who wear very nicely cut suits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wish you'd worn your leather jacket. <laughs> I bet you do at weekends, don't you? I've only ever worn... You just wore... don't on the TV. <laughs> I, I, only, I do wear a leather jacket, actually. I wore a leather jacket, I bought one once, a leather jacket, a shiny new job. Felt very embarrassed in it. Does anybody? Uh, leather jackets have to get old uh, as well, you get now old. Now you tell me, you see. You have to live in them. But I felt very embarrassed about it, as you do when you when you change skin, so to speak, you know. And I was going to wear it on the show, and I thought I'd test it out on other people. And I got in the lift at the seventh floor, of the television centre. It was jammed with twenty people in the lift, and I was forced up against the door, <laughs> you know, the petitions. And I felt sure they were all talking about me behind my back. Oh, no, yeah. Right. You know the feeling. <laughs> I know the feeling right. well. <laughs> and it dropped down to the fourth floor and it opened and there was Eric Morecambe. <laughs> and he put his glasses on the side of his nose and said, Parky, you look like a tall wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I should take him to task about that if I ever meet him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about nudity, not clothes. Let's talk about the fact that you, in fact, have taken your clothes off on screen and partly disrobed on, on stage as well. Do you have any, any sort of feeling of embarrassment about it when you do it? Yes, I used to. I didn't enjoy it at all. But I felt that that was my, my problem, basically. Um, again, one of those things that you were taught at school that you spend the rest of your life fighting to get out of. Um, there are lots of reasons for feeling uncomfortable about taking your clothes off in a movie, and one of them is that basically, whatever the director says, you know, basically you know that it's being done for commercial reasons, mm. and uh, it's a male chauvinist kind of, you know that <laughs> phrase, I'm sure. I've heard it before. <laughs> You've heard yes. it before, yes. right. But, uh, uh, and I think that that's probably the ba main source of the discomfort, is that you somehow feel as though you're being got at and you can't quite explain why. Um, for instance, I used to go swimming in Jamaica with my friends without any clothes on. Uh, and that was no embarrassment at all, just a really very nice feeling. I think that, I do think that if girls have to take their clothes off on film sets, then everyone should do it who's engaged on the film and then... Um, That's a good idea, isn't it? They probably yeah. stopped making new movies then. You mean the perhaps director they will, and... Perhaps they, yes, everyone. Everyone on the film set should just... Because the thing about being naked, in that sense, is that you're the only one. Mm. Mm. You know, you're all alone. <laughs> and everyone else has got their clothes on. It's just a funny feeling. It's not nice to be the outsider. Yes. yes. And yet, of course, you, you curiously enough, well, perhaps not curiously enough. You, you refused to pose in the nude for Playboy, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, I find a Playboy pornographic magazine. 
I mean, much more pornographic than Screw or any of those so-called pornographic magazines. Um, it's disgusting because it's pretentious and romanticised and sort of, I don't know, it's just money. It's just a, you know, it's just a book of money and an attitude to money, mm. basically. Diana Riggs says she wouldn't do it for the, the same thing because really? she mm, refused to have a staple through a navel. She said. <laughs> <laughs> now let's well, talk about what, what's coming up next for you because in fact you're going to, uh, what, in two weeks' time, isn't it, appear with the Royal Shakespeare Company? Is it two weeks? Yes, beginning of March. That's right, in mm. uh, Lady Macbeth. No, it's not called Lady Macbeth. I know it's, it's not Lady Macbeth. Macbeth. You're, <laughs> you're playing Lady Macbeth. I'm playing Lady Macbeth. Yes, That's indeed. Right. Um, how do you how do you go about approaching a part like that, which has been done so many times by so many great actresses? Just you just go at it like anything else. Take the ball by the horns. The fact that it's been done by hundreds of actresses better and worse than you before, and will be done by hundreds of actresses better and worse than you after you, is um, irrelevant. Mm. It's a good part, it's a good play, and it's got something to say to you personally as an actress appearing in it and something to say to the audience watching it. And that's all that you've got to be interested in or involved in, I think. Yes. Do you, are you aware, too, as, as somebody who works with the Royal Shakespeare Company, that there are a lot of people in, in this country who are very much put off by Shakespeare? I mean, could you... You've obviously thought about this, but anybody... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Gesundheit. <laughs> Is it hay fever? Uh, I think so, yes. I sneezed earlier on today when I was doing a radio recording, mm. recording disastrously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you ever considered, you must have obviously considered that, that point and, and wondered why perhaps it is? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, my, what, what, what were you saying? Why, why is what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being difficult. Really. No, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. no, no, you I'll wouldn't be difficult, would you at all? At this moment. I'll tell you what. Regain we'll forget about composure. that. We'll forget about that question. <laughs> and while you regain your composure, uh, in a moment, I'm going to show you some film. In the meantime, Helen Mirren, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.